What's happening everybody? Before we start the episode, I just want to give you a quick update. Last week's documentary about Nini Wahuni who lost their mast, you guys all donated and you raised an astonishing $40,000. It is absolutely mind-blowing, the generosity of you guys. I touched base with Travis yesterday. They've already done all the touch-ups to the paintworks to the hull. They've got new stanchions made. They've put in the new chain plate. They're getting a new solar panel arch made. They've already bought a mast and a boom and all new sails. They're gonna be hauling out in September and step the new mast and then wait for the weather window to cross the Pacific. So they're delayed by one year, but their boat is gonna be just fine because of you guys. So thank you so much. And from Travis and Shauna as well, thank you guys. Absolutely mind blowing. Anyway, just wanted to let you know where your money went and let's see what's in today's episode. I can't believe this is real. <laughs> this is crazy. Colin wants to go 70 knots. We're probably gonna go 50 knots. Oh, that was epic. We were flying. I live for that. Using this drone, I can control peacocks. This is the shit I have to deal with. How do you even vlog when you got these guys around? It's the ultimate way to live your life. Just keep pushing forward, don't be afraid, take risks. If you got a dream, stick with it. May not come right away, but it's gonna happen. Hurricane Irma boats tossed. Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. It's Puerto Vallarta to Mexico City. The next stop, Miami. So this week we're going to have a bit of a change of scenery where we're going to take you along to Miami to the International Boat Show. Going to boat shows has become a big part of our lives as we get to meet so many people that support our channel, but we also get the opportunity to see all the new companies and technology coming out in the marine industry. It's also just exciting for us to get off the boat for a few days and do some traveling by air for once. We've been on this plane about five minutes. <laughs> and he's out. Okay, we made it safely to Miami. We have to go to dinner with Battleborn now, so we all just went in the bathrooms and put some shoes and stuff on. Looking smart. Oh, except Britt. Extra she's, smart. She's thinking of a comeback. <laughs> we probably won't film in the restaurant, but uh, yeah, we're here. Tomorrow, day one of the Miami Boat Show. Let's go. Oh, aircon. One of the main reasons we were in Miami was to celebrate being on the cover of Latitudes and Attitudes magazine, who kindly put us up in an Airbnb for the weekend, and we were joined by a familiar face. I can't believe this is real. <laughs> this is crazy. You said this was the number one cruises magazine? Yeah, it's the number one cruising cool. magazine. Sorry, I took one. Welcome to Miami, David. Day one in Miami. We're ready to go to the show. Freshly ready. No, we're going to be good this one. We're in bed early last night. Fresh start. We're going to go see Ultra Anchors, Zeldin, and Valor Boatworks. And he's going to take us out on his speedboat. 1400 horsepower on the back of that bad boy. So we're going to go for a bit of a cruise. A couple of uh, old below deck people are going to come meet up with us there. So stand by for that. So on our way to the show, we stopped at the Museum Park Marina to say hello to a few of our friends. How are you? How's the show been? Thomas Gailey is the president of Lagoon Catamarans, and although we had a very strained relationship in the past over some boat issues, we've now become friends over the years, and it's always good to catch up at the boat shows that we go to. And it's also never too early to have a beer with our good friend Jonas at Selden Masts. So this is our new uh, CXE, our uh -huh. boat filler. Two speeds, yeah. uh, slow speed 200 RPM, fast 500. 
system. Right now we have four electrical systems. It's the same brushless motor. Now you've been cell bus. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so we said this does what? 500 RPM? Top speed. This could go on a code zero and uh, bring it in in 10 seconds. So you don't have to be at the winch going. And there's overload protection, so if you don't let the sheets off, yeah. it stops. Jamie, you're blocking my camera time. <laughs> oh, you're upside down, bro. <laughs> you're not going to tell me that before. So we headed off to the boat show where we were immediately greeted by friendly fans before we went to meet David Levesque. Glad to meet you finally. What's going on? How's it going? This is David Levesque. David is one of the owners of Latitudes and Attitudes magazine. After winning YouTube Channel of the Year at the Cruisers Awards last year, he reached out to us to try to get us on the cover of the magazine, which launched right before the Miami show. So it was cool to be able to promote the magazine and give out a few signed copies with him. So we took this magazine over about a year ago, and uh, it's a 25-year-old magazine. It's got a pretty good legacy to it. But what we really want to do is we want to just encourage people to get out and water. Um, people think it costs a lot of money to go boating, and it really doesn't. I mean, it takes a dream, right? It just takes a dream. Hey, what's going on, man? This is Shane, he's got uh, Indie Marine. And I was looking through his catalog online and just saw some of this sort of stuff that I really, really liked. And he's just bought us a few gifts here to, to take home and try out. Like this sort of thing we could put onto our, okay. our Jennifer sheet. Absolutely. And Good. just, it's Lots just of one places. little pop uh, and it's in. It's locked in with Dyneema. So I said I liked them and he bought us a few. This wasn't available in North America six months ago. Right. Right? And uh, so now it's, now we're distributing it to all the channelers. Everybody seems to love it. 1800 kilograms on that thing. Indy Marine, go check them out. Thanks for the presents. We then made our way over to see our mates at Ultra Anchors. We got our anchor a couple of years ago and it has literally never dragged on us, so I'm always willing to stand by this product. I could go on about how great they are, but if you're in the market for an anchor, just do a bit of research and you'll see for yourself they are unbeatable. So this is Alex and Chase. If you guys are watching this season on Below Decks, by the time this comes out, the season will be out. Read the room, Chase. Let me get your goddamn on man. <laughs> oh, jeez. we got a Sharpie. So we, 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 we filmed Below Deck together and we ended up being Ruby. So on the first day, he turns up and he, he pulls out a Parlay Revival shirt. Producers come running in, they say, Chase, you gotta throw that thing in the bin right now. He can't be a fan of Parlay Revival before we even start like working together. Okay, look, I happen to know who you are because I'm in the world of boating and sailing. You know, anyone who's in the whole yachting world knows who you are. So is it a crime that I showed up with some fucking merchandise? I, <laughs> I don't think so. Give me your autograph. Okay, like, I want to be friends. I was just happy What's wrong with it? You've inspired us to try and get a boat and go sailing. So, you are going to do it? That's the plan. In about 10 years, I want to be done working and go sailing. You're going to go Monohalo Catamaran. Catamaran. His name is Hudson. He's friendly. He's friendly, yeah. We then headed to the Venetian docks to meet our friend John, who had given us a whole bunch of fishing gear over the years, but was now the president of Vela Boat Works, and he offered to take us for a spin. But this joyride wouldn't be complete without a couple more below deck friends. I'm John Jackson, president of Vela Boatworks. We are on our 368, which is a 37 foot center console catamaran, powered by quad 350 Mercury Verados. Colin wants to go 70 knots. We're probably gonna go 50 knots. <laughs> We're doing 70? We're doing 70 knots, yeah. 70 John, knots, John, John is gonna take us. We're all gonna get our Navionics out. As fast it, until the first person screams, okay? He knows he's about to do 70 knots. And he's, he's got a lot of people on board. John was the one that took us out in Fort Lauderdale. And we caught those big sailfish. Whose was bigger? <laughs> Jamie, who's Who got a bigger one? Whose sailfish was bigger? Mine? <laughs> That's not even a question, John. What are you going on about? Since then, we became good friends. He, he's helped us out with a bunch of fishing gear. And now he's making these things. That's unreal. Oh, that is good. We, we got someone on watch. There's a lot of things that go into the manatee movement, right? At any time, a manatee can pop up. And boom, man, manatee, stop the boat. We gotta, we gotta save the manatees, you know? We're about to do 70 knots on this fine catamaran. Got on your head! Fast. <laughs> it's fast. It's fast. Holy. 
Oh, that was epic. We were f***ing flying. And the engines are just I live for that. That was literally the fastest I'd ever been on a boat. Hit John up if you have a need for speed. And thanks to Jono, no manatees were harmed in the making of this video. What the f***? What the hell? There's a peacock in here. Thought I heard somebody. Apparently they're on the roof too. <laughs> oh my god, dude, why? Jamie's never seen peacocks before. I don't know why they're all on the roof. It's just our roof too. No other roof has peacocks. All right, so I have a new pack of uh, crew here. <laughs> Using this drone, I can control peacocks. Native to Asia and Africa, the peacock's emergence in South Florida remains a mystery. There could be up to some 1,500 peacocks living in South Miami, according to researchers. A 20-year-old Miami County law protects peacocks from harm and capturing, which has enabled the population to grow exponentially. So we're going to go back to the show today. We are uh, going to a different area. That's one thing about this show that's a little bit uh, difficult is that it's all spread out throughout Miami. You've got to catch Ubers from one place to another. We arrived at the convention center to be met by some friendly fans. A lot of people know us as the bulkhead guys, but it's nice to meet fans in US even before then. I started following you well before you found all of the work that you had to do on the bulkheads. So all right. Like every week. Okay. okay. It's a good thing we don't have any cattle. Okay, we're here at Battleborn, as you know. Uh, we are partners with these guys. They helped us get through our whole ordeal with uh, refitting the electrical system, and now we've got a thousand amp hours of lithium batteries. But we're here with Dennis. Hi there. I'm Dennis Ferris. I am the CEO of Battleborn Batteries. Batteries, actually Dragonfly Energy, which is the company that makes Battleborn batteries. One of the most important things is that a lithium ion battery can shut off if it's too low in yeah. charge. It can shut off if it's too high in charge, right. if you have a short circuit, high, high temperature, whatever. Yeah. So one of the criteria is you have to have a warning on when a sh shut off is imminent. That's a new criteria. That that's a new criteria. Okay, they yes. put it, and I think it's a great one. But yeah. That's one that we've addressed directly with the Dragonfly intelligence system, which is basically a way to communicate for all the batteries. Yeah. So you can have eight of these batteries. They're all talking to each other yeah. and then aggregating all of the important parameters. Yeah. And if a shutoff is imminent, you'll get a warning. The new intelligent batteries will be available towards the end of the year and will be an absolute game changer as they monitor every single cell inside the battery. And when interfaced with the app, you can literally see exactly what is going on in each battery. If you're in the market and can hold off until then, I'd highly recommend it. Dennis, thank you so much for your time, man. Really appreciate it. And, uh, look forward to seeing what comes out next. It's always pretty awesome seeing all the latest and greatest gear from all around the world at the boat show. We then walked over to visit our friends at Highfield, who always welcome us with a cold beer, and they even had a special surprise for us. This is sick. Ah! Because we always have around eight crew on Parlay, we started toying with the idea of getting a second smaller dinghy to run around in if the crew wanted to do separate activities. But we had no idea Highfield would have one ready for us at the boat show, so we were stoked to see it there. The only problem was getting it down to Mexico. I'm shipping this to your house. I know, I know. Yeah, what are you talking about? He thinks he's going to get this dinghy. It's going to show up on my, guarantee you, it's going to be on my boat. You'll ship the other one down. <laughs> All right, it's our third and final day at the boat show, but first we're going to go to our Patreon meetup. It's just so nice when we get to do this. These are the people that support this channel and make it all happen for us. So whenever we can hang out with them, we love to do so. So one of our patrons, Carlos, has offered to do it at the top of his apartment suite. It looks incredible on the photos. Let's go check it out. Hey, 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 we finally got to meet him in Annapolis. In the drift yeah, yeah. It was so generous of Carlos to put us up, and we got a spread of pizza and beer for everyone, including some familiar faces. My old boat, it's, it's, uh, it's been a fabulous journey. 
watching this boat be revived and the epitome of parlay being lived out by these guys. It's the ultimate way to live your life. Just keep pushing forward, don't be afraid, take risks. You only talk about the things you didn't do, talk about the things you do. You know? well, God, it's a gift. It's the first legalized run to story in North Carolina. Do I have to shoot it or taste it? Ooh. Not bad. To top things off, Colleen was also able to make it down from Fort Lauderdale and we were excited because she will also be crossing the Pacific Ocean with us. We absolutely love doing these meetups and do them everywhere we possibly can because we get to actually put some faces to the names that we see on our Patreon chats and our posts. These people obviously see something special about what we do, so it's so nice to be able to spend some time with them and actually hear a little bit about their lives rather than them always just seeing us on their screens. Alright, so we're headed to the YouTube booth at the convention center. This boat show is really spread out, okay? You're also going to benefit how many people are going to be there in three No, years. I'm not telling, I'm not <laughs> telling. This is not a booth announcement. This is for the YouTube like video. It. And this comes out in 2030. Finally, we'll be on a reef in the Red Sea by the time that comes out. This is the shit I have to deal with. How do you even vlog when you got these guys around? They think I'm going to edit. I'm not editing this. I know I know I'm going to edit. I, it'd take me a year and a half, okay? But they edit on time, so. Headed to the convention center. This is is this the last day? Yeah, for us. It's the last day. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice These are the ticket winners. Yeah. How's it going, bro? Nice to meet you. These guys won the uh, Miami Boat Show tickets. What's better, Palo Revival or Bullet? Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really recognize <laughs> <laughs> The baby recognizes Colin from the TV. <laughs> Does he recognize I'm me though? <laughs> Jamie, I knew you were drinking beer, my friend. <laughs> How'd you know? I knew it, bro. Tell, tell you, the audience how hard it is. How hard is it to fix fiberglass? Oh my god, this is the worst nightmare that you can ever have. <laughs> and try to leave it like nice and smooth. You can go through years of sanding and it'll never be smooth. We sold everything in Tennessee, where we're from, and we bought an RV. So for the last year and a half, we've been traveling the country in our RV, still looking for a boat, and it's very hard. But watching Parlay gives us hope. We flew, we flew here, we picked traffic, cut off people, eight lights, to meet you. <laughs> well, I love your show, man. I just wanted to tell you, like, I really enjoy your channel. In all seriousness, We've never been to Miami Boat Show before, and it's been a it's been a pretty cool experience. It blows my mind. It blows my mind when anyone wants us to hang out with them at a show, and uh, this is not this is no different. Thank you for having us. It's been good. Latsats.com. L-A-T-S-A-T-T-S.com. So it was an amazing weekend away from the boat thanks to Latitudes and Attitudes magazine, and it was so good to connect with old friends and make a bunch of new ones as well. The locations where we sail are so remote and off the beaten path that it's nice to be able to come back to civilization now and then. It is so humbling to see how this channel has grown over the years. Even the checkout agent recognized us, but we will never let any of this go to our heads or take any of it for granted because we appreciate every single moment of it all. That's a wrap. That's Miami Boat Show. It's done. That was fun. It was intense. Intense but fun. Next stop, <laughs> dry dock. <laughs> Fun's over.